Welcome to the Library of Humanity. Today we're looking at human history in a nutshell. So what really creates history and why do historical events happen in the first place? One of the main sources is human ego, the ego. So what I will do is I'll use spiral dynamics, spiral dynamics as one of the main explanations for what type of ego we are talking about. We're going to describe what the human ego really is in this video. So first of all, I have a couple videos on spiral dynamics if you're unaware of what it is, but here I will give you a basic idea of each of the stages of spiral dynamics and what type of ego it has. Basically, spiral dynamics is the attempt to explain all of human history and the future of humanity. Here you see the spiral dynamics map. First you have survival known as beige. Second of all, you have stage purple, stage red, blue, orange, green, yellow, and turquoise. So first, on the bottom of spiral dynamics, we have stage beige. Now stage beige is part of human history when we were hunter-gatherers and we were just becoming homo sapiens. So we were like homo erectus or other a species of proto-humans, but then about 400 or 300,000 years ago, we become hum uh, Homo sapiens. Okay, so there's actually more evidence now that Homo sapiens are older than we originally thought. Um, a lot of people believe that we are 100,000 or 150,000 years old. However, humans are now about 300,000 years or plus uh, old and that would be representing stage beige at the bottom. And at stage beige, we are worried about surviving as a proto-human, or the beginnings of a Homo sapiens species. It is not until we get to stage purple that we begin uh, kind of the essence of human uh, consciousness. So with, at stage purple, you begin the tribal level, and so you have tribalism, and this is when humans began uh, having spirituality. Maybe there's something more than just me and my environment. So that would be stage purple. So let's start. So at stage beige, what we saw was at stage beige, you have just pure egocentrism, where it's like you're a baby and you're only worried about surviving. So that is type one egocentrism only worried about survival, and this is where a lot of animals are at, or even the pre-stage beige stages. And at stage beige, this is when we are only worried about survival. And it, it's not until, until stage purple, like I mentioned, that human beings begin to have a different type of ego. It's almost like your ego is connected to your tribe. Okay, so now you have tribal centrism, uh, not quite ethnocentrism, but it's also not completely a basic level egocentrism. This is when you have tribal warfare. Okay, so at the beginning of human history, you have tribal warfare, and that's due to stage purple style ego, which again is you believing that your tribe is better than another tribe, or tribal superiority, so you're willing to go to war with that tribe because you believe that the other tribe is inferior to your superiority as tribe A. And then you go to take the resources of tribe B, such as uh, make the men slaves, make the children slaves, and make the women um, your wives. And that would be uh, kind of tri the stage purple tribalism. And that's why there might be war. The next stage up, we have stage red. Stage red is pure egocentrism like Donald Trump style egocentrism, where it is a kind of a masculine style egocentrism where you're worried about your, not just, not your survival necessarily, because at stage beige you have your, your survival figured out. It's more at stage red, so again, again it's beige, purple, and then red. Stage red is a return to the individual egocentrism, where you are like maybe a gang member, or you're a soldier and you uh, have this masculine energy to fight for your own ego. 
um, and your own pride. So at stage red, you start to have personal pride where you think that you are better than everyone else. You want to use physical strength to physically beat people. Um, and that's why warriors and gang members and even some politicians who use primary level of ego where you're not, it's not very sophisticated. Um, it's a little bit elementary in how you may be corrupt because like Donald Trump, for example, he's not um, corrupt in a very sophisticated way as maybe someone on Wall Street might be corrupt in a more sophisticated way using white collar crime. So stage red is still about using your physicalness to uh, overcome a weaker opponent. So parts of human history that might have stage red is the Mongols. When the Mongols took over uh, parts of I mean, almost all of Eurasia, the Mongols had as much territory as any uh, civilization or tribe or nation has ever had. And that would be dominated by stage redness, which would mean that Genghis Khan was stage red in the sense that he wanted to overpower his opponents and rivals. A lot of stage red would also be when like the city-states in ancient Greece would fight each other because you had like the warriors in Sparta um, fighting against the beginning of stage blue in Athens. So in Sparta, you would have stage red soldiers not wanting to fight the stage blue Athenians who are beginning to see kind of state-sponsored democracy. This is the beginning of having a, a nation state. Okay, so this is when you start seeing that uh, we have ethnocentrism. So ethnocentrism is when you have your nation and you're nationalistic and believe that you are superior to other nations. Okay, so tribalism was at stage purple when you had your 1,000 people believe that you are better than the other 1,000 people down the river. Whereas stage blue ethnocentrism is when you and your nation of maybe 1 million, 5 million people uh, are better than the other nation uh, on the other side of the continent. So it's nations versus nations. And you start definitely seeing this in the Cold War. You see this in World War I. World War I is a perfect example of stage blue nations fighting each other, also known as ethnocentrism. So your ethnic group is better than another ethnic group. But really, it's your nation better than another nation. However, there's a lot of other examples of ethnocentrism in Eastern Europe, in the Balkans, in the 90s, when you have these different ethnic groups fighting one another, leading to violence. You even have, uh, such as in Africa, when you have civil warfare between, um, like for example, in Nigeria, there was the Biafran Civil War. So Biafra was actually a, a created nation by, this was created by the British when they went into Nigeria and they made Nigeria one big country rather than three smaller countries. So now you have a civil war because you have like, the civil war refers to the Biafran secession, which refers to the southeast part of Nigeria, known as Biafra, dominated by the Igbo people, I-G-B-O, who wanted to secede from the rest of Nigeria, specifically from the other ethnic groups in the north and the western part of the country. Because in Nigeria, you have three main ethnic groups, and those would be considered nations. Okay. Also, a perfect example of ethnocentrism is Japan, where Japan has this idea that their, their nation is better than all of the other nations, uh, specifically in Asia, but also in North America and Europe. So Japan believes, uh, specifically during World War II, that they are the best nation in the world. So after stage blue ethnocentrism, we finally reached stage orange egocentrism. So it's again a warm color, so it's actually a symbol of egocentrism rather than group centrism. So as I mentioned, as I have mentioned before in other videos, the cool colors, so purple, blue, and green, these are group centered versus the warm colors of uh, beige, red, and orange are ego-centered, okay? It's even, it's actually all ego-centered, 
But an ethnocentrism or group centrism is just another style of ego. It's actually group ego or collective ego. Okay. So with stage orange egocentrism, it's very sophisticated egocentrism where you are a business person or a scientist or uh, some, so it's usually connected to secularism, which secularism, secularism is divided into, uh, you have capitalism and modern science split. Okay, so stage orange began with Rene Descartes, and then it continued into when modern science was developed and when capitalism in the Netherlands and Great Britain was developed. Now, this is egocentrism because this is hyper-capitalism. So this is all about the money. So when it's all about the money, it's all about the consumerism. So consumerism is inherently egocentric because if you are, say, Great Britain and, you want, and the citizens want to consume, 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 because uh, consumerism came from the Industrial Revolution that began in Great Britain in the early 1800s. So once you have the Industrial Revolution, you start having consumerism. And this demand for consumer goods led to imperialism into Africa and India and other parts of the world that Great Britain went to in order to extract raw materials um, such as tea um, and other natural kind of agricultural resources or natural resources and bring it back to Great Britain in order for the British to consume such as tea, sugar, and felt hats, for example, in North America. Um, this is where you got the, the beaver hides and fur, and you, you send them back to Europe, and this, you have European men, especially, wearing the felt hat, a symbol of consumerism. Okay, so consumerism is a perfect example of egocentrism, where it's all about pleasure and hedonism. So hedonism is when your ego wants to consume and have pleasure right now, right now, right now. So or, stage orange consumerism is your desire to go to the convenience store and get a Snickers bar. Stage orange consumerism is you wanting to go downtown and dance with your friends and have a few beers at the club. Okay, stage orange consumerism is you wanting to fly to Cancun for spring break. Okay, this is all egocentrism, albeit it is very sophisticated egocentrism in the sense that it's it's completely interconnected as a global economy. So there's an interesting dynamic with the global economy having its own ego. And it's almost the most sophisticated ego that we have seen is the global economy or the homo sapien species in general. That would be the stage orange economic system of globalization having one ego, one entity. And that is way beyond and more complex than even one ego that would be yourself uh, who is involved in this stage orange capitalistic consumeristic society okay so finally we have reached stage green where we're beginning to see postmodernism i've mentioned postmodernism before so stage green is another group dynamic where the idea of truth is that every nation or every group around the world has a little bit of truth and that we need to listen to every group uh, we need human rights so that we can listen to uh, indigenous voices. We need, we need environmentalism so we can protect uh, indigenous people, but also different species of animals around the world. Okay, so this is actually a reduction in individual egoism um, and then a, a, an increase in group egoism. So the, the collective would become the, the global economy turns into the global culture and the global culture believes in um, humanism. And the humanism is the idea that each human has the equal amount of dignity as every other human. And that we all need to uh, listen to each other. And the best way and most efficient way to do that is for to have a global culture of inclusivity and diversity. So that an aboriginal person in Australia is no worse or better than a Swedish person. Um, that who might have more money. So it's actually not about money, it's actually a return to uh, socialism. It's a return to communism, but again, it's stage green communism versus stage blue communism of like 
uh, Russia or the Soviet Union or Cuba um, or other styles of communism that you saw in like Southeast Asia. Because that's stage blue communism, uh, like Maoism. Maoism would be, would be stage blue communism. But now we're starting to see stage green style socialism like in Norway where you see that the belief is everyone is equal around the world and that in order to increase like creativity, um, uh, happiness, so this would be the push in Bhutan for uh, gross domestic happiness. So if you've heard of gross domestic happiness, that's a stage green push so that everyone can have as much happiness as possible in their society. Now it's not more than stage green yet because this is not a stage yellow um, group dynamic or, or return to the, to the individual saying that the individual is a creator. So you, you, at stage yellow, the next level above stage green is when you start seeing that the individual is, the, is a creator and um, that outside of the individual is a system that has its own ego. So at stage green, you don't know yet that actually the entire global economy and the entire global culture and the entire homo sapien species is actually one entity. And it's actually one system and it has its own ego, it has its own agenda, and it's up to the rules or the law, the natural laws of A, the earth, and B, the universe. Okay, so this is when you start seeing at stage yellow that... Uh, so, because stage yellow, we haven't seen much of stage yellow yet in history. Only history kind of stops so far at stage green. Stage yellow is yet to be written in the history books. That is why it is really hard to explain stage yellow to you. Why stage green might make a little bit of sense because you see it in Scandinavia. You see it in the hippie movement. So, yes, the hippies are actually more spiral dynamically mature than the capitalists and the modern scientists who are into the materialist paradigm, which means that um, some modern scientists, they believe that everything is material and there's no mystery out there, such as the mystery of consciousness. Okay? That, that's when you return to state, you, you, you go into stage green, because stage green is about kind of, you might be a hippie and you might believe in the idea of consciousness and that there's oneness out there and that we're all connected via consciousness. Um, however, at stage orange, uh, science, scientism or modern science, it's actually scientism because it's actually like a, it's a philosophy. Uh, modern science itself is not a philosophy. Scientism is a philosophy, a stage orange philosophy, an atheistic philosophy that everything is material and that there's no mystery such as consciousness. That consciousness can be explained by the material matter in your brain. Okay, so that for if you believe that that consciousness is a is a consequence of your brain chemi chemistry, then you are at a stage orange philosophy. If you think that consciousness is still a mystery and that it can't be located in your brain, then you have reached either stage green or beyond. Okay, and that's what we talk about in this channel is is the mystery of consciousness. And so if if you if you like my channel, you are probably at stage green or more or yellow, or even turquoise, which is the last stage that I'll mention today. So again, uh, human history ends at uh, stage green so far. Stage yellow has yet to be understood in history. I would say that stage yellow began with quantum mechanics, uh, specifically stage, stage turquoise. Um, so stage turquoise and stage yellow begin to almost merge and seem like the same thing in history because we don't know enough about yellow and turquoise. Uh, but theoretically, yellow is an, is an individual focused, uh, where you see the individual as the creator, as, as a creator with free will. Whereas in turquoise, you finally see that the entire universe or the entire earth is one community. So that's a return to a group ego. So again, the cool colors are group focused and the warm colors are individual focused. But yellow and turquoise seem to uh, come together. Um, especially when you're reading the history books, because it's not yet there. So that's, that's the basic idea, is that there's different styles of ego through the different spiral dynamic stages. 
and it, it increases in complexity as you move up the spiral. Okay, so you have, again, at beige, it's very, very basic until you finally reach stage green where the ego is very complex and you don't really know where the ego is in stage green because it seems like stage green is all about global, uh, global um, cohesiveness and solidarity. However, that's not the case. There is still a lot of ego in stage green because stage green is actually judgmental of stage orange and stage blue and even of stage yellow and stage turquoise. So stage green still believes that stage green is the best. Okay, It's not until you hit the second tier of yellow and turquoise that believe that there's no, there's no such thing as better or worse. There is just the system of human beings, the earth, and the universe. Okay, so if you have any more questions about the dynamics of ego or the dynamics of human history, you can comment below. If you like this video, click the like button. Again, I'm interested in these topics because A, I'm a, I'm a social studies history teacher in high school level, and B, I'm a seeker of truth in my free time, and my life goal is enlightenment for all, not just enlightenment for me, because enlightenment for me equals enlightenment for all. There's no separation between me and everyone else. Okay, So if you agree, click the like button. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.